How are you feeling right now, Chan? How are you feeling right now, though? I'm feeling good. I'm anxious. I want to get it over with. I want to. I want Saturday. Well, I want Sunday to be here already. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's the plan for Sunday? Sunday is to go to Jackson Hole and eat a big burger with a chocolate milkshake and French fries. I <laughs> should I know I Jackson that. Hole? I don't know what that is. Should I know that well, place? You should. It's the best burger place here in the city. It's on 35th and 3rd. It's a good friend of ours. Uh, the burgers is the home of the nine ounce burger. So nice. <laughs> uh, uh, what, what, um, what does Brooklyn, New York and fighting in the garden mean to you? Well, fighting in the garden is um, is extremely special, and especially at the Hulu Theater, you know. I've made history there, um, becoming a seven division world champion. I won the first piece of this division there. And it's just so nice to have the last piece there and becoming on the spirit of champion there. You know, it's history after history at the Hulu Theater. And um, I don't know, especially the Hulu Theater. So it's a lot smaller and intimate. Yeah. It can be. It's like right there with the fans that you get to exactly. celebrate with the fans. Well, I like the way that you use history. Like, what does history mean to you? Like, you and your team, like Jordan and them, what does that mean to you guys, history? Well, history means a lot, you know. You have to set yourself with little goals to stay motivated in this sport, especially in women's boxing. It's never been it's never been easy for us, you know. I started back in 2009 where it was very few females, very few, like, championship fights. <laughs> Let's not talk about the money. <laughs> it was yeah. absolutely no money in it. But you just had to set yourself for goals. And winning uh, a champion was like, That's of course, you, you become a pro boxer and you want to become a world champion. That's one of the goals. So we accomplished that. And then I had an opportunity to go to another division and win a, win a title there. So that so then you start building off of that. And you're like, wait, you want to be the best from where you're from. And I am a super proud Puerto Rican. So I know Miguel Cotto is a five-division world champion. So I mean, a four-division world champion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I don't even, I don't we'll wanted excuse to be, you because it's fight week. We'll yeah, you well, for that. yeah, I know. It's, yeah. <laughs> so um, I wanted to be just like him. So I decided. So I tied the record, becoming a four division world champion. And I was like, wait, um, I, I still have it in me to, to yeah. do better. So then I became a five or six. And then that's how you, you get, you stay motivated in the sport. And now, I know Puerto Rico's never had an undisputed champion. So this fight is definitely the, my biggest motivation to to do that, to accomplish that goal. Have you switched that motivation now from, from moving from, I, I want to be that person who can do more than Miguel Cotto in terms of taking over different divisions to now I want to be undisputed. I want to be preeminent in one division. Is that more important to you now than it was previously in your career? It, yeah, it is. Right now we're in the undisputed era. So everybody wants to become undisputed. And me realizing that Puerto Rico, we had such a small island, but we had great, big, talented boxers coming out of Puerto Rico. And to never have an undisputed champion coming out of the island, I was like, wait, I can do that. I can achieve that goal for them. And that was definitely the motivation. And you take that motivation just like any other thing to to push you and and, and just make you better. I saw you say that this is your your most important fight of your career to date, which I guess when you think about the Katie Taylor fight and, and the attention that that fight got, that, that sounds kind of surprising, right? Why do you consider it the most important? You know why? Because this is the, the division where I feel my best, where I feel comfortable. Mm. Any other division, it was just to make history. It was just to, you know, I, and people think that I can just jump to these divisions but every time I go up, I'm at a disadvantage. Every time I go down, I'm at a disadvantage. So people don't realize that at, what, at featherweight is where I started featherweight as, a, as an amateur. I was 125. I won these gloves in 2008 at 125. So this is where I feel my best at, at featherweight. So people don't realize this is my biggest fight because I'm going to become undisputed at my division. You said a lot of key things earlier about like Miguel Cotto and the island and everything like that. I'm looking at that tail. And I'm seeing that like right now you are the most relevant, significant Puerto Rican out of the male and female boxes right now. How does that make you feel that you are actually walking the same steps as Miguel Cotto, Trinidad, <laughs> and you know what I'm saying? All these other great Puerto Rican legends that were male, but you're actually taking over male and female being that key significant player in Puerto Rico. 
Yeah, I'm truly honored. Truly honored. Those are big, some big shoes to fill. <laughs> and yeah. it's a little, you know, um, not a little, a lot of pressure for, for me, you know. I just break up and, and I make sure that I'm the best version of myself, my the best athlete that I can be. And I just go out there and I perform to my best abilities and just make everyone in my team proud, everyone in the island proud. So but though that's some um, some very honorable. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, Amanda, Kay says that, sorry, Kay says that that's how he sees you. I guess I'm interested, how do you see you? Like, do you consider yourself the preeminent Puerto Rican fighter of this generation, male or female? You know what? I, everyone tells me, but I'm so humble that I, I still don't see it. Um, I guess because I'm still in the sport. Maybe when I'm done and retired, then I get to look back and be like, wow, I did that or I accomplished that. But to me, I still feel like I'm just a little girl from Brooklyn, just just fighting my way <laughs> to the top. <laughs> that's that's the how best, I feel. That's the best way to do it. No, I, I like that because I'm looking at your last three fights. Do you feel that it's since then the change with Jake Paul and the last three fights, do you feel you and your team, Jordan, you guys have more pressure now? Like those last two fights, like look at where you're going now. You know what I'm saying? Like now people know Amanda Serrano. Like they know you. You guys feel pressure I now? Say, yeah, no, I wouldn't say more pressure. I mean, you definitely want to perform and you want to, now that the, the light is on me, I'm shining, you need to perform and you need to just be the best so you can continue to open the doors. I want to show that women can fight, women can sell, women can do a lot of things that these men are doing as well. So I'm just I'm glad that I, I've got this light and I feel like I'm the one holding uh, helping hold the, hold the torch to open these doors. And and because of Jake shining that light on me, people are more interested in seeing women's boxing. And to me, that as as a team, as a group, like Jake Paul wanted to sign a female, it helped the sport of female boxing. You know what? I always wonder about the flip side of the Jake Paul situation, because we always discuss like how positive that is, right? What he's done for women's boxing and for you personally. But how do you feel about the fact that it took a Jake Paul, it, it took a guy from YouTube, not somebody with a storied career and a big legacy in promoting boxing to be that person that made a difference for you, to believe in you and, and, and elevate you in the way that he did? Yeah, it was frustrating, you know, really, that it took a young man like Jake Paul to do that for, you know, we've been around for so many years. And finally, this guy coming into boxing, realizing how hard the sport is mm. for him to to shine that light, that light. I was like, you see, this is exactly what we need. People should take a page out of his book instead of, you know, talking badly about him. But I was frustrated for for a very long time. And and. I'm just glad that he found that I was the one to be the first signing of MVP and to push me and 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 show showcase me. What do you see in Erica Cruz's record? Like, are you looking at the 15 wins or are you looking at the one loss? What are your team focused on that makes you feel like you're ready for this fight? Well, we look at, you know, Erica Cruz as a as a whole fighter. You know, she is a Mexican champion. She did beat the champion for that belt and defended it. So, you know, she, we know that she, she's tough and, and she's going to come in and, and try to take my titles away from me. And, you know, it's not because she has one loss or 15 wins, you know. You know, the heart tells a lot and she has a lot of heart and she's going to come to fight. So I got a big question for you, right? So how many times have you spot Shushu? <laughs> um, I was by social once, once, yes, once. yes. Well, you know, you know, after that time, he never came back. Oh, oh, oh damn! So you don't tell me my father never came back. Oh man, I gotta get him in the gym. I gotta get him in the gym next time. I gotta get him. But you, so, so you tell him feel, I said that. I'm telling him I said that. Oh, you on that? You want, you, really? Come on! Like I gotta say, what's going on? I was just sparring. What happened? You know, she no, told me No, nah, that's all right. But like, how do you feel like? sparring male and female like who wakes you up well definitely when i spar with the men is definitely a disadvantage for me i'm always yeah. either the smaller girl um i'm always getting hit the hardest but to me when i'm in there with a guy it's either like fight or flight you know and i never know how it is to fly <laughs> i'm always in there fighting for for my life and to me i take that so when i go in there with a girl this is like Wow, this is easy peasy. I'm not getting hit as hard. My punches are landing a lot better and cleaner and crispier. And it, it just it helps me. So I don't 
I mean, I kind of mind sparring men, but I know it helps me out. It, it benefits me. So to me, it's just like, ah, I got to take another one on the chin, but I know it's going to help me in the long run. So what does that make you think when you hear of, of other professional female fighters who would spar predominantly women? How do you feel about that? You know what? But what? Women, women do, they bring a different fight in sparring with, with you, I would have to say, because I did spar a couple of times with one, with one girl that she, she was tough as hell too. And she, you know, she, she brought it and, and she was, she kind of reminded me had the style of an Erica Cruz that she just kept coming forward. And it, it, you know, it opened, it opened me up, opened my lungs. I was able to see how durable I was. So it, it can help you because women always going to want to be competitive against you. They always want to feel like I want, I'm better than you. But then there's some women that I spar with girls and they never come back. So and it's very hmm. hard to find that one special girl that's going to continue to come back. And once I, and I found her and she's going to be um, in the next camps that I have. So with the other girl, it just it just depends on how that sparring partner brings the best out of you. You have to find that special sparring partner. So this is Cruz's second fight out of Mexico, and you're fighting at home. Who has who has pressure on themselves? Is it you fighting at home, or is it Cruz coming to your backyard, knowing that crowd is going to be predominantly? Let's take away the Puerto Rico aspect. Just just predominantly people supporting you. Do you think who I has? Think- like, yeah, I don't know. I would have to say, um, I mean, we both have our own pressures and our own ways. But yeah, definitely she's going to be a little bit out of her element. I mean, it's something different for her. You know, especially, like I said, fighting in that Hulu theater where you feel like the fans are on top of you. She might feel some type of way, but I'm used to that. I've been there before, so I know how that feels. But yeah, the pressure, I feel I have a lot of pressure too because I want to be able to perform for my fan. I want to give them a great show. So I think it's going to be for both of us, but I think a little more for her. When you're talking about pressure, I guess everybody at some point needs a release from pressure, right? And people always talk about you and, and your discipline. You don't drink, you don't party, you don't have a cell phone, you don't date. You don't do a lot of things that other people do as a release. <laughs> what is your release? Like what gives you a buzz outside from boxing? Well, the family, we we love um, shopping, going to the mall, eating that stuff thing, going to the movies. So that that's what kind like, of shopping are we doing? Um, not too expensive shopping, but oh. like, yeah, we go to the malls. Like, we go to the mall like two or three times a week. Like something like, my 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 brother in law Jordan, my my trainer, we like oh, I'm like, I don't want to go to the mall again. I'm tired of it. He's like, Wow, that's a that's something you never really hear from a girl. But yeah, just, um, <laughs> just spending time with the family. Like I'm a family oriented person and I just love, I love that. And I just bought my house last year in Puerto Rico. So oh, at wow. least now I have a chance after this fight, I get to go out there and enjoy it. And I know you don't like too expensive a shopping, but didn't you just buy two Rolexes? Well, I had, <laughs> yeah, oh, wow. I had it <laughs> oh, well, it wasn't at the same time. It wasn't at the same time. Okay, but, okay, but, okay. But my biggest, my biggest accomplishment, my biggest splurge was uh, two years ago when I first signed with Jake. You know, I bought myself my truck, and then last year I bought myself my house in Puerto Rico. Convenient. But now, now is now is enjoying when I'm at Puerto Rico is enjoying buying house things. I'm an at home person now. <laughs> That's dope. Oh, you know, when you talk about when you signed with Paul, I guess it's not that long ago, right? It was 2020. You were openly discussing retirement potentially from boxing. You were discussing maybe making a move into MMA to try and make some of the money that the women over there were making. When Jake Paul came to you and said, listen, I can make you millions. Did you buy that? Did you think that that would actually happen? Not at all. I didn't believe him or, or in the case of them both. They, they promised me and me and my trainer looked at each other and we laugh and say, hey, let's Let's just get the followers that we're going to gain from this because that's all we're going to get. <laughs> but, you know, honestly, they exceeded. You know, he gave us some, like, this, he said this year, this amount, the next year, this amount. And I I didn't think that it would have came true and it's come true. And they're just continuing to, to do the best for me. So, so how is that relationship with you and Jordan, being your brother-in-law, being your coach? Do you feel closer? closer? (laughs) Jordan might kill me for this one, but you know what I'm saying? It's just like, how do you feel about that? Like, I like that, that you say, you know, you guys hang out outside. It can be annoying at times. It can be annoying at times, but no, no. I think sometimes he wants, he definitely wants the best for me. 
And sometimes he wants it more than I do. Like sometimes he believes in more than he, he believes in me more than I believe in myself. And so to me, that's the best. And it's like, he's always pushing me. He's always motivating me. He's always showing me, look, you do this, do that, do that. So he's always, you know, he's been in my life since I was 12 years old. So he's always guiding me down the right path in life and in my career. And to have my sister right by my side, too, it's just like he knows when to position himself the right way. He knows when to be the brother-in-law or the husband to my sister. And he knows when to be the box. I mean, the just training, the boxing training. Like he knows when it's time. He's like, no, suck it up. You need to you need to do this. You need to do that. I don't care. Like he knows how to baby you. And then he also knows how to toughen you up. Like it's a lot of time people. together though, right? Like in between camps, do you guys hang out? Do you take some space? Yeah, no, we, we're a family. Like it's always us three, me, my sister and, and Jordan. And then the kids, my nieces and nephew occasionally, like my niece, I have a niece that's 21 years old, which is my sister's and Jordan's daughter. And then we have my nephew who is 13. And at times they don't want to be around us. So it's always us three. We either go to the movies, going to the mall, going to eat. That's our thing. That's our splurge. We eat. Pretty much every night we're eating out. <laughs> <laughs> so when you guys get into arguments, do you say, come on, sis, we're just going to go spar? Oh, no, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. You know what? In sparring sessions, like in the gym, we go at it. Like where people will look like, wow, they must really hate each other. <laughs> but once once we get off that ring, it's like we're back to sisterly love. Like you won't even know that we just killed each other in the <laughs> in the ring. But it's super, super nice. And to have that relationship with my sister, because she knows at times how I'm feeling. Like she's always, you know, during fight camp or fight week this week, she's making sure that you have this, make sure you eat, make sure that like she takes some of the burden off of me so I can just make sure that I'm concentrating on the fight and concentrating what I have to do. Has boxing taken a toll on you yet? You're 46 fights in, right? Like that's a heck of a lot of fights, camps, all of that, that the, the rinse and repeat. Has it taken a toll? It, it has. I mean, you, you, yeah, it has, you know, because this is a contact, combat sport. So you're, you're getting hit. You're, you know, you don't feel, I don't feel like I'm 18 anymore. But this camp, I actually started doing um, recovery. And I'd never done that before. And it's, I was like, wow, I, this is really, really needed. And so I feel I feel the best I have been in a very long time doing um, the sports massage therapy and doing stuff that I have to do. You too. never did massage? Never. I never. And, I've, and, and look like what that. I got accomplished. Really? So, so yeah. I just added that. So. <laughs> do you think there was a reason that you didn't feel like you needed that stuff because you didn't really feel like you had the light shined on you? Like. You felt like, oh, man, I'm OK. I, I can fight through this. It's whatever. And now that you're at this big stage and now you guys are bringing things, adding things to, you know, what I'm saying your arsenal to say, hey, man, we should start doing this because you are going on a bigger stage and people are looking at you and anything can happen. Do you think that's exactly. what it is that made you guys add that? Exactly. And also, you know, you have um, the talent pole. They're, they're coming. You know, we have a lot of great, great girls coming up in the sport, younger girls coming into the sport. So you have to make sure you stay, you know, it's easy to become a champion, but it's harder to, to keep that status, that champion status, maintaining that status. Staying I, love, I love that you said that. I love that you recognize that there is young, talented boxers. You, to me, are a boxer. And I love your footwork. I love your distance range. I love that. I love no matter what the pressure is coming at you, you still hold your ground and do what you got to do. And I feel like some males and some people don't see that women can actually do or do better than men in boxing and look great at it. With me saying that, you watching the talent pool come up from amateurs and you know, the pros and stuff like that, do you feel like that's what the world is really seeing now? They're not seeing girls like going crazy, fighting like that. They're actually seeing real talent, like footwork, head movements, lips, doing great stuff like that. Do you feel like that's what's out there right now with you, the Carisha Seals, the Michaela Mares, Alicia Bumgarners, and everybody like that? Do you feel that's yeah. what's, what's out there? Definitely. That's what people are interested. I mean, occasionally you still have those girls that, you know, <laughs> because you still have, you know, but that's what people want to see. That's what people once they start seeing it and, and having these girls on, on multiple um, cards, like this, this card is packed with amazing talented women and they're going to see that they're going to see you know great fights after great fights and that's what's going to continue to have the fans 
fans and people motivated to to want to see female boxing. And now we're making statements. You have two undisputed fights this night. Oh, so you, you introduce this. So people are like, oh, wow, you know, men are not even doing that. You know, men are not fighting champion versus champion, the best versus the best. Yeah. And you've seen in us women, we have to make a statement and that's what we're doing. I guess I just wondered, you mentioned Miguel Cotto before and the fact that you wanted to emulate him. Was there a female fighter, either somebody you were coming up with the same generation or somebody previous to you who you wanted to emulate? Or was it always the men? No, it was always my sister. My sister, to me, my sister was, at the uh -huh. time when my sister started, there wasn't really much female boxing. There was even less when she started in 2003. So I, she was my biggest and, and number one motivation, like my idol. And I kept looking to her, even though it's so funny because we have totally different styles. Like she's an yes, amazing indeed. boxer. She's yeah. the orthodox and I'm just a yeah. southpaw brawler that yeah. don't care to get hit. It's so hard to hit my sister, but it's, they, yeah. it's so funny, but she's definitely was one of the idols you like the attention that woman boxing is getting right now you love it of course of course it's um the start of something new something big and i i'm super glad that i stuck through it that i stuck with it and i'm getting to see a little bit of it but it's all about the future what is the future for you like you've headlined now madison square garden what what's left for you to achieve where you go this is it this is what what well, this is what i want and then i can then i can get out of boxing and feel good well, definitely come Saturday night, becoming on the Spirit of Champion. It's definitely the cherry on top. You know, to me, that's uh, definitely the goal. But I feel like if I even if I didn't become on the Spirit of Champion and I'm just stuck, I'm, I had seven division. To me, that's my biggest accomplishment. I, I believe being a seven division world champion is bigger than being on the Spirit of Champion. But just to have that is the cherry on top. And then from there, you know, I don't know, <laughs> just to continue to defend them, those babies that I worked hard for. Do you feel like you need the win over Katie Taylor to get out and really feel comfortable with what you've accomplished? Not that it would be any less if you don't have that win, but just to feel like I, I did everything I wanted. You know, I I'm not even thinking. I'm just thinking about Saturday night, Erica Cruz, hey. uh, Hulu Theater, becoming on the Spirit of Champion at Featherweight. So I, I like that. I like that, that that's where you're thinking. You know, do you feel like this camp was harder than anything? Because you want this, you want this. I can hear yeah. this voice. <laughs> yes, we, we yeah, this. we really had to. We we sat down together, the team, meaning my sister and Jordan, and and we realized we said that we need to, you know, step it up, step our game up, and and we we sacrificed for this for this training camp. I sacrificed, you know. I hate sparring. I really do hate sparring because, like I said, I'm always at a disadvantage sparring men. Huh. And Jordan said, "You know what? I'm the things you hate to do. We're gonna just do it more." And I, and I still hate it, but I <laughs> did it. <laughs> but but it, it's gonna be beneficial come Saturday night. What are you gonna eat after Wayne? Well, uh, my 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 mom makes me some baked ziti, so I eat some pasta. <laughs> okay, okay. I just wanna know, man. Uh, I'm sending out a lot of prayers and love and to you and your team. You know, what I mean, you. Um, this is a big, big, big moment for you. You know, what I mean, um, all the hard work that you walked up to this level right now. I hope it pays off. You know what I mean? Thank and I hope, you know, what I'm saying you just believe in yourself even more that night. And just do yes. it for you. Don't do it for anybody else. But do it for yourself. <laughs> Thank you. I really appreciate it. Some strong, kind words. And I'm going to do that come um, Saturday night. Have my hand raised in victory and becoming the first on the spirit coming out of Puerto Rico. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you much. Thank you. Have a good Thank one. You. Appreciate you.